Okay, good morning. My name's Ian Scott, but everybody calls me Scotty. Um, I'm going to be covering quite a number of uh, topics today on the First Aid at Work syllabus. This is coming to you from uh, proactive first aid training, so you'll ex excuse all the, uh, the logos. You're not going to get the opportunity to ask me questions, obviously, because this is a one-way thing. However, I am going to be happy people prompting me to make sure that I cover everything for your benefits. After each topic, you will be doing a, a short little uh, uh, five questions about the topic to make sure that you've got the full understanding of, of that topic. All the topics I'm going to cover are within the syllabus. Some of them will be video like this. Some of them will be a PowerPoint for you to read through. Okay, I'm going to get started. Now, your bread and butter with first aid is the primary survey, okay? Uh, hopefully this is something, if you've done first aid training before, you'll not recognize it straight away, which is Dr. ABC. With regards to dealing with casualties, there's three casualties you're going to be dealing with throughout the day. The first one is a talking casualty. Now, if it's a talking casualty, you must get consent from them to treat them. Um, if they refuse for you to treat them, then you don't treat them. If you think they've got underlying issues, mental health, etc., then you will then get some help. Call an ambulance, call the police, and they, then if they need significant treatment, they've got significant injuries, then you call for help, okay? So, talking casualties, okay? If it's a non-talking casualty, then we're gonna use a primary survey to establish vital things about that casualty. The main thing being, are they alive? Now, our three priorities with any casualty is to preserve their life, prevent worsening, and promote their recovery. So, preserve life, prevent worsening, promote recovery. But again, if it's a talking casualty, you must get their consent before you treat them. Now, if they're not talking, i.e. they're unresponsive, they obviously can't give you consent, so the, inset, the consent is implied. You go ahead and treat them, because that becomes a medical emergency. If they can't respond to you, you just treat them, okay? Okay, so the primary survey is made up of a, a mnemonic called Dr. ABC. The most important and the first part of Dr. ABC is the D, which is danger. Now, if I said to you, what's the most important, who's the most important person when we are dealing with danger, uh, who's your priority? It's us, the first aider, not the casualty. So you must think about yourself first, i.e. don't go into a dangerous situation with, without considering your own safety first. There's nothing worse than going into a situation having multiple casualties because people haven't considered their own safety. Uh, lots of people every year die trying to help other people. So it's got to be about looking after yourself. Now in this current climate with the pandemic, you've got to think about one danger, which is COVID-19 and other infections. So we must wear gloves at any time. Now, for the purpose of today, I won't be wearing gloves um, for some of the activities. When I'm doing hands-on with a, a, a volunteer, then I will be wearing gloves and a mask. But for this purposes, I don't need to be wearing them today, but you'll be wearing gloves at any stage. So it's always uh, handy to have gloves to hand. Every first aid kit should have latex free gloves in it okay so every first aid kit should have first aid uh, gloves in okay so dr abc as i've said the d stands for danger so you're assessing your situation you've got a casualty lying on the floor okay now it's a stepwise process to dealing with casualties the first thing i'm going to do is talk to my casualty so the r is response so we've covered the danger I can now approach this casualty. I'm not going to put hands on at this stage. I'm just going to talk to my casualty. So, hello, first aider, can I help you? Now, if the casualty talks to me, straight away, I know that casualty is breathing. So it's a big thumbs up. So talking casualties are good casualties. Now, if it is a talking casualty, we need to ask questions about what, what's happened. Have they got any allergies? Um, have they got any pain anywhere? How are they feeling? And this can help us identify what's wrong with them. Have they got any underlying health issues? Can I physically see any problems with that casualty? Are they bleeding profusely? Have they got a bruise or a swelling? Um, are they throwing up? Are they on any medication? There's lots of things you can be asking your casualty to establish what's wrong with them. 
If it's a non-speaking casualty, either not responding to me, then I have to go a little bit further with my response checks. So the first thing I want to do is do my response checks, working through a mnemonic called AVPU, which stands for alert, voice, they respond to voice commands, a pain response, and I'll discuss what that pain, I'll demonstrate that pain response. And then if they don't respond to any of that, they are deemed unresponsive. Okay, so I'm gonna go through that from the top then. So checking for danger, and I'm gonna put my gloves on. Gloves are on, checking for danger. Hello, first aider, can I help you? Not responded initially to my question. Hello, first aider. So I'm gonna get a little bit closer. Hello, first aider, can I help you? Open your eyes, open your eyes. I'm giving them a command. They still haven't opened their eyes, so they, I'm, I'm not sure whether they're sleeping or they are actually unresponsive. So I'm gonna initiate some pain response. And all I'm gonna do is just tap the shoulders, little squeeze. Have they responded to that? No, they haven't. So we have got an unresponsive casualty, okay? Now I've established we've got an unresponsive casualty this becomes a medical emergency because I don't know why this casualty is unresponsive. So at that point, I'll be calling for some help. Okay, so can I have some help? Now, assuming I get a, a third person to come and help me, they can do all sorts of things for me. They can get me a first aid kit. They can get me a defibrillator. They can take stuff out of the first aid kit for me, like my gloves. They can ring 999 for me. Now, if I don't have a third person, third party person to help me, a bystander, then I've got my phone, I'm gonna initiate a 999 call on my phone, and then I will put it on loudspeaker and place the phone next to the casualty so I can continue with the Dr. ABC mnemonic. So as long as I know I've got some help on the way. So from this point now, what I'm gonna do is go through A, B, C. Now A stands for airway. The most common cause for blockages to the airway is the tongue. 98% of the blockages to airways is the tongue. A casualty lying on their back, unresponsive, is in a dangerous position because the tongue drops back and obscures the airway. So the first thing I'm gonna do is establish if that tongue is causing a problem. Now, the easy way to spot a tongue block in the airway is snoring, uh, and if it's fluid, i.e. vomit, blood, or saliva, it's gurgling you're listening for. But you will hear labored breathing. So I need to sort that airway out first and foremost. So the first thing I'm gonna do is look in the mouth. Okay, I can't see any obstructions. I can hear snoring, but I can't hear gurgling. So I'm happy there's no fluid. If I could hear gurgling, then that means they've got fluid in their airway. And the best way to deal with that is to roll the person straight onto the side, tilt the head back and let gravity do the job. So the, the fluid will come out of the airway. Once you've cleared that fluid, you place them back. We do not put fingers in mouths because of the risk of you getting your finger bitten, but also you could induce vomiting, which is never a good thing with a casualty. Okay, so we've cleared the airway. Now I need to stop this snoring because that's the tongue causing the problem. Now the way we do that is we place one hand on the forehead, two fingers on the chin, and we tilt the head back. And at the same time, lifting the chin up. That will pull the tongue naturally away from the airway. That should stop the snoring, at which point we've now cleared the airway. Once you've cleared the airway, you can now move on to B as part of doctor's ABC. The B stands for breathing. Now we need to assess whether this casualty is breathing. Now, we've got two protocols here. We've got a, a COVID protocol, which basically where we normally check for breathing is to get our ear down next to the person's mouth. But in this current climate, all we're going to do is keeping the airway open. I'm gonna look from here at the person's chest and I'm looking for signs of movement of the chest and the abdomen to establish whether that person's breathing. Quite often in unresponsive casualties, you can actually hear them breathing as well. So very quietly listening and looking for 10 seconds. Now, why do we check for 10 seconds? The reason we check for 10 seconds is because we need to hear rhythmic breathing. Now in 10 seconds, I'd expect to hear the casualty breathe at least twice, okay? What we don't want to hear, and is very often mistaken for breathing, is a, a condition called agonal gasping. Now, what does that look like? I'm gonna demonstrate what this looks like. And this is very common in people that are about to die. And this is how in uh, hospitals, they can actually yes, assess something and go, the family need to come in now because they haven't got long to go. And it looks something like this. And 
and eventually that person will stop breathing completely. So if you hear agonal gasping, you treat them as though they're not breathing normally, in which case we then follow the protocol of how we deal with the non-breathing casualty, okay? So we've got the airway open, we're maintaining that airway throughout. If you let go of the airway at any stage, it will close. So do not let go of the airway. Keep it open, assessing for 10 seconds, and I've assessed for 10 seconds, I have got rhythmic breathing. Now, the, the last part of Dr. ABC is the C, which stands for circulation. Now, obviously, circulation is important for a casualty because what does circulation do? It pushes the oxygen around the body. More importantly, it makes sure the brain is getting oxygen. The brain will die three to four minutes without oxygen, okay? So it's vitally important we establish if this casualty is breathing. We've established the breathing, so we're happy with the circulation. However, there are other things, a uh, vital thing that could affect the circulation, that could be catastrophic bleeding, okay? Now, if you see a lot of blood around the casualty, if it's a catastrophic bleed, it would be spurting if the heart is pumping. If the heart is not pumping, you're gonna find out when you commence CPR on the casualty that they've got a catastrophic bleed and you'll see blood coming out of the casualty at a great rate of knots as you're pumping on the person's chest. It's the only thing that comes ahead of breathing on a casualty when we prioritize casualties. If they've got a catastrophic bleed, you need to plug that hole, you need to deal with that bleed. And again, that's where I'd get a bystander, put some pressure on that while I do CPR on this casualty. But this casualty at this stage, I've assessed and they are breathing. Checking for danger, I've got my gloves on. Hello, first aider. Looking for any danger around the casualty. Hello, first aider, can I help you? Hello, first aider. Open your eyes, open your eyes. Okay, can I have some help, please? Can I have some help, okay? Just stay there for a second. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna need your help. I just need, need to do some checks on this casualty, okay? So first thing I'm gonna do is just check in the mouth. So I'm assuming I'm checking in the mouth, I've got a face mask on there, but I'm checking in the mouth. But if I had a face mask on on the casualty, I would need to remove that face mask in real situation. Okay, I'm gonna tilt the head back, opening the airway, and I'm gonna assess the breathing. So I'm checking for 10 seconds. I've got good rhythmic breathing. Okay, right, what I need you to do is I need you to call me an ambulance. I've got male aged about uh, 20 years old. Um, he is breathing, but he's unresponsive, okay? I don't know why he's unresponsive, but he is unresponsive, so it's a medical emergency. On your way back, can you grab me a first aid kit and a defibrillator? Are you happy with that? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, you go and uh, get that for me. All right, I'm just going to place him in the recovery position. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate the recovery position now. Okay, and he is breathing. 